Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to be speed running Arch install and Hyperland install. So let's get started. All right, so we're gonna be popping into a desktop right now, actually the BIOS. So hit whatever key you need, delete F1, F2, whatever it is to get into your BIOS, just so I can get into the boot menu. Now, luckily for me, this is my workshop computer. I have everything backed up. I don't usually mind if I format it a couple of times a week or whatever it is. Here in this BIOS menu, all you have to do is get into the boot menu and choose the device that you are gonna be booting up. Either the generic, if you're using uh, standard BIOS or UEFI. So I'm gonna try to use that one and choose Arch Linux. Now this is almost the latest ISO that you can get. You could probably download the newer one, but yeah, 8.1 is fine. Now, once you're in here, uh, Arch Linux is probably by far one of the hardest Linux installs to go through, but it's gotten a lot easier over time because we now do have something called Arch Installer. Now, if you need more details about that, I actually made a video on installing Arch uh, using the Arch Installer, and I'll leave a link right over here for you guys. But otherwise, gotten a lot simpler since then. All right, once booted up, you're gonna see a lot of these OKs. That means everything is working, so we are good to go. I'm just waiting until I drop into a prompt. Now there is a way to uh, get Wi-Fi working in the beginning. Um, there is instructions for that. Again, on my previous video, there is a little thing about it, but I am using ethernet, so I don't have to worry about that. So after that, it brings me right to the prompt. All I have to do is arch install. There you go, testing connectivity. And we're gonna have to go through this uh, very, very <laughs> janky menu. Um, it's not too hard, you could just go through it. They actually made it better since the last time I made this video. Uh, better as in more stuff is added and it's easier to install stuff. So I'm gonna choose Mira, head over here. I'm gonna go down to uh, United States. Hit okay on that. Back, and it moves automatically down to the next prompt. Locals is already defined because it knows I'm in the US. Uh, disk configuration, I'm gonna use uh, the best effort and I'm gonna choose this one. And it tells you which one you can boot into. Uh, BetterFS, ETX4. I'm gonna use BetterFS. Uh, sub volumes with the. So I'm gonna leave that as default. Would you like to use. Uh, actually, I don't want to use the compression. But yeah, that's how it, everything is all set up. Moving down to disk encryption. I am gonna skip this because I don't want any disk encryption. Bootloader, we're gonna use systemd boot because we are using UEFI. Otherwise, if you're using uh, BIOS, it's gonna be grub. Uh, swap, true. Host name, I will change this to workbench. Uh, root password, uh, I'm not gonna set that up because I wanna keep uh, root disabled. User account, this is where you wanna add a user, put your name in, and then do you wanna be a part of sudo? And you're gonna say yes for that. Confirm and exit, so now I got one user in there. Here's the important part, profile. And because this is a newer Arch Linux install, it, it actually has Hyperland. So all I have to do is do desktop, choose Hyperland from here. Look, there's a bunch. There's Sway, Qtile, i3, if you wanna use other uh, tiling window managers. But we're gonna be choosing Hyperland, and it's gonna install everything default for Hyperland to work. So we have the greeter, SDDM. We have open source drivers. Actually, we're gonna switch that to NVIDIA proprietary drivers because I need to use this to edit sometimes so we're gonna keep that on and we're gonna hit back kernel uh, actually audio driver hit no anytime I try to install pipe wire which is what we're gonna be using it will cause an issue with uh, one of the install files and it kicks out of the installation so just leave it as no audio server and we'll install that later on uh, kernel I'm gonna leave as Linux additional packages I'm gonna do Firefox that's just bare minimum, so you could actually get Firefox to work. If you want, uh, probably Rofi. And that's because that's one of the menus we're gonna be using for um, Hyperland. And I'm gonna keep those two. Network configurations, use Network Manager, because we're gonna install a GUI Network Manager, so we could actually just click and drop and select the network interface you wanna use. So I'm gonna use Network Manager. Time zone, if you want to switch this, you could change it over to new, I'm just searching right now. New York, automatic time zone, optional repositories. Actually, in here, you want to enable multi-lib and install. This will take about, actually, I think 10, 15 minutes because it's going to download all the files it needs off the internet to the machine. So just let this run until it needs to reboot. And I don't know, depending on your computer, like I said, 10, 15 minutes. All right, and we are back. 
Would you like to perform post installation configurations? Uh, no, I don't need to do anything post configurations. I'm just gonna skip that and reboot. So far, I'm about like 13 minutes into this installation. So more or less with explaining and everything, I think that took like less than 10 minutes. So now it's gonna boot up into my um, Arch Linux. We could get rid of that later on in the future. There's still a lot more configurating you, configurations you need to do. Like booting up into that, maybe I wanna add Plymouth so I have a new startup logo. Um, I still have to figure out if it's gonna work for my video. I have to do that NVIDIA trick for my last video. Um, there's a lot of things I still need to sort out, but it should work. There you go, Hyperland loaded in. I see my mouse cursor, NVIDIA is working. I'm gonna hit Windows key enter, which is not what I need. Oh, actually, no, I have some sort of terminal because it was uh, Windows key Q. So let's go into uh, dot config, hyperlan, and hyperlan config. I don't have VI, nano. I have nano. Let's do that. And we could look at our configurations on what everything has. Uh, you can leave everything as default, but if you want to set up particular monitor size, it's all here. Everything that you need to do here. Uh, mouse speed, mouse movement. Uh, I'm mainly looking for, so I do have Kitty installed because that's what I'm using right now. Uh, it requires Wolfie, which I don't have Wolfie. And, but I could actually change this to Rofi, R-O-F-I and should be good. Let's see. And no, that's not it. Uh, I should have looked up what the button combination was to pop that up. Otherwise, this is the main thing that we're going to be dealing with for the next um, foreseeable future. <laughs> well, I'm actually going to install a theme in a few minutes. I just want to get some of the primary things I need done here. Um, Rofi would be R. Okay, Control X. So that would be Rofi. There you go. That's not working properly, but it's fine. What I want to do is Firefox, and we're going to put an ampersand. So this way I'll start up Firefox, and then I still have it on the side. Uh, you know what? I want to get rid of that menu up on top. So this auto generate, I'm going to get rid of that. It's going to reset that and clear that up. And here we have our. Firefox all up and running. Now, all I have to do is go back to that guy's uh, theme because he has everything all set up to the way that you kind of want everything to work. So I'm gonna do google.com, look up uh, Linux mobile because that's the guy we were using it from. And here you go, Hyperland. And Hyperland dots. And we are gonna stick with this because this was the same setup that I was using last time. It's a beautiful setup. It's good to start off with. It has everything that you need, which is like CPU, speed, uh, RAM. It has the menu on top, uh, everything that you would want to get everything all initially set up. You could actually look at his, some of his old setups, which is pretty cool as well, if you like more of a darker theme. But yeah, for now, I actually really like um, this setup. So I'm just gonna go into the install step and basically copy and paste all the stuff he has. So instead of using Paru, which I actually tried to use Paru and it's pretty nice, uh, you could use anything else like yay or uh, whatnot. So sudo pack man syu, this is the first time. I am gonna see if I can install Paru. I don't think it is in the repository though. No, it's not. I could install yay. That should, that's not even in the repository. So. What I'm gonna do right now is actually install Paru. So I'm gonna do uh, arch, no, A-U-R Paru. Let's look at where that is. I have the packages over here, so where's the git? And I don't have GitHub installed, so I'm just gonna copy this for now. Copy link, pacman syu git, and build, not build essentials, I keep thinking. Uh, base devel. Those are the two main things that we need. So it actually allows us to make the AUR packages and get to grab the AUR packages. Let's see. So I'm gonna, I don't have the download folder. So I'm gonna make their downloads, downloads here. And then I'm gonna grab that. So I'm gonna do git, paste that in here. Sorry, git clone and then paste that. CD over into Paru and I do make, uh, PKG and it's SI and I think that's it. I'm gonna let this go 
and I am going to open up another thing before it starts installing everything. Let's see, not HTOP, but we want to do DF and DF-H. Total install size was 4.6 gigs and this is a fresh install with just Hyperland. It takes about 4.6 gigs. Running just a few things right now. Well, I can't tell because it's at two gigs of RAM trying to compile this and I have Firefox running, but it is a very low consumption RAM uh, running Hyperland and Arch Linux like this. I think it was like 400, 500 megabytes. I kind of need to take my word for it for now because again, this is compiling everything. So you won't know until this is uh, all over. But for now, uh, I'm gonna let this go, finish up setting up the rest, and I'll jump back to when this is completed. But what I'm doing right now is just basically copying and pasting everything. Obviously, use your common sense. Don't copy and paste Hyperland Git and Hyperpicker and Waybar. Like, okay, actually Waybar you do need. But you don't need to reinstall Hyperland again from Git. And you don't need to install Hyperpicker from Git. You could just leave those out and install Waybar, install some of the few other things. Same thing goes for down here. You just gotta make sure what you need to install uh, because some of them is already pre-installed. You don't need to recompile and reinstall everything. Uh, mainly like here, I don't need to use OBS because I'm not gonna be installing OBS. So you could skip this, but install Pipewire because Pipewire is part of the sound system. So we're gonna need to use that. We don't need VS Code, so we can leave that out. File Explorers, you can use Brave if you want, but we already got Firefox, so just, again, Use what you know that you already have unless you want to copy exactly what they have. Uh, File Roller is a pretty good one. Uh, Thunder is another good one. Uh, just remember to install the fonts that they want. And he does use a different terminal and it is not Kitty. I think he called, he has it here, Waze Term. Yeah, Waze Term. So you do want to install Waze Term uh, just so you could get the transparency from the terminals, which I will be doing as well. But this whole installation from this uh, Git takes more than the installation itself. I think it took me like 20 minutes to compile everything, get everything up and going. All right, now that we have everything all set up, this took about, I think, 40 minutes or half an hour to compile everything. Uh, we could check out the system now. So now it has the nice animation. It doesn't have the border around the corners. Uh, you can add more prompts in here drop in my file roller or this is um thunder i can grab uh, close out a few other things i can move it around i could actually make this smaller or bigger it's it's really nice once you get to uh, practice using this a little bit so what i do want to show you is now that i got everything all up it is uh, uh, 735 megabytes now that we have a bunch of stuff rolling around like the transparency and the uh, terminal so it is using quite a few bits of memory and if we were to check out the storage wise now it's 11 gigabytes that's like about five more gigabytes or six more gigabytes than what the install size was and that's because of all the compiled software that we have i also do have uh, code in here because i do use that a lot so now it's basically my notepad and if i wanted to move it over to one uh, because everything else is on two uh, I could see everything all um, nicely put here. Uh, if I want to use a browser, I also have Rofi all up and set up. I grab the browser right here. It'll pop in, move this to number three, and YouTube works, audio works, everything else works. I am missing a, quite a few things that I would normally use, like a network manager type thing where I'm able to configure my networks. Uh, I still am missing the sleep functions so if I was to walk away from this computer for like 20 minutes or whatever, it would uh, turn off the screen or go to sleep. Um, some of those little bits and stuff that I will have to start adding in later, but actual operating system and everything is fully working. I, I got everything to do what I need to do. And it's very pretty system. I do really like Hyperland for how it works with Wayland and Wayland is so much cleaner than X11 on the screen tearing. Like I still get screen tearing on X11 if I was to use something like this. Even on KDE, I get uh, screen tearing, but on Wayland that is completely eliminated. So I do like this. I am gonna install a few more other things on here like Steam, uh, some applications we we're doing with the Office uh, video that we had and a bunch more stuff. But going forward, I think I'm gonna be running Hyperland for a little bit just to see where my comfort level is at. Right now, I do like it. I'm gonna keep it, but you never know. Maybe something else comes along the way and I wanna check that out. Anyway, that is it for this video. If you guys liked it, please hit that like button. If you guys got any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.